You know, as we wait for everybody to sign on, let me give you a quick overview of Ms. Avachi for anyone who's not familiar with it. Number one, I'm Glenn Schreier, um, a CPA and an attorney, and I'm a principal at Ms. Avachi in the tax department. Um, Ms. Avachi has about 100 employees, I guess is a rough estimate, and most of which are working from home or a good portion are working from home now. I'm in my office here in Mount Arlington, New Jersey. Uh, Ms. Avachi does, uh, we have a public uh, entity uh, group that does auditing of municipalities and school boards primarily. Uh, that's about half the firm. And then we also have a commercial audit group that does commercial entities and nonprofit audits. And then I'm in the tax department. And Ms. Avachi also has a related wealth management uh, element of the firm, which I think they manage about you know, about a billion dollars of uh, assets and management. So it kind of gives you a brief overview uh, of the firm. Okay. Now let me, let's get started. As most of you guys are familiar, New, Jer New Jersey was one of the states impacted by tax reform. Tax reform, before tax reform, which came out in 2017 and primarily impacted tax year 2018, uh, New Jersey, you were allowed to deduct your state and local taxes unlimited. Now, the state and local tax deduction was subject to something called AMT, alternative minimum tax. So people often lost some of those deductions. But your real estate taxes, your New Jersey income taxes, New York City income taxes, New York, uh, New, York, New York State income taxes, your Connecticut taxes were deductible on your federal return as an itemized deduction. Now, part of tax reform limited that deduction to $10,000. So suddenly, especially here in New Jersey, you're suddenly paying $10,000 or more in real estate taxes. So you're not getting any benefit of your state uh, income taxes, your state and city income taxes. So many politicians in the states started trying to uh, think of a way around, a loophole around um, the salt, $10,000 salt limitation on individuals. Now, the first idea that kind of floated around here in New Jersey was charitable trusts. You would pay a charitable trust um, equal to your real estate taxes. And instead of being a real estate tax deduction, you get a charitable deduction. Now charitable deductions, while they're limited to 60% of your AGI, your adjusted gross income, they're not subject to a $10,000 limitation as your state and local taxes are. So as a result, you would get a deduction on your return. You paid a charitable deduction equal charitable trust equal to your real estate tax. Now you would get a credit with your municipality. Your municipality was going to be the ones who would form this charitable trust, and you get a credit for your real estate tax equal to what you put into the charitable trust. The IRS ruled against this relatively quickly, and um, kind of put the halt to all these ideas of creating, you know, a charitable trust for every. Uh, municipality in the state of New Jersey. So the second idea came up was, as a result of tax reform, individuals were limited on their state and local tax assault deduction, but businesses were not. So now a corporation paying um, $100,000 in New Jersey corporate tax got a deduction on its federal return for that $100,000 state tax is paid. While individuals, if they paid that same $100,000 in income tax, was subject to that $10,000 limitation. So Connecticut probably was one of the first ones that came up with the idea or passed the idea, and other states have kind of run with it, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, Wisconsin, and many other states, of creating a pass-through entity tax. So an entity, uh, pass-through entities such as an S corporation partnership would pay the tax based on its income. And as a result, since it's a business tax, it wasn't going to be subject 
to the $10,000 limitation. Now, the Connecticut tax was a mandatory tax on all pass-through entities. Now, New Jersey has come up with this New Jersey Pass-Through Business Alternative Tax Act, or BATE, um, that is a voluntary tax. Now, you, this is your electing, your pass-through entity is electing to pay New Jersey pass-through tax. You don't have to pay it. It's an election that you, the entity will make whether to pay that or not. Let me launch the first polling question for everybody. And wait a second. And the question is, what is your law practice area? Is it general, family, real estate, state, uh, state, and ta uh, state taxes? partnerships, um, what or other. So we'll give a chance for everybody to uh, answer this question. We've got a couple more people who haven't answered it yet, so we'll give them another minute. And just keep in mind, you need to answer the questions in order to get credit. Second, and then we're going to end the polling. Okay. So most people answered. Most people answered other. I think a couple of people were general. Then a couple of people, most people answered other. I knew there was no one for family law, real estate tax, real estate or estate tax. Okay. So, so, New Jersey Pass Through Business uh, Alternative Tax Act, it's effective starting in 2020. And the idea behind it is to give parity by, between the C Corporation and Pass Through Entities. As I said, the C Corporation was able to deduct as state taxes, the Pass Through Entity um, was not able to deduct. The individual owners of the pass through entity weren't able to deduct those state and local taxes. So it seemed like there was an unfairness between two different types of businesses, whether um, they got that state and local tax deduction. Now also, C Corporation is subject to two levels of taxes, while pass through entity isn't. Now, right as right now, as we're going to talk about later, Connecticut's pass through tax hasn't been challenged by the IRS. But the you know the idea behind this uh, is that business entities are allowed the deduction for the tax. And also the Trump uh, administration seems to be more business friendly. So maybe it won't challenge this tax. Now, the business entity tax that they'll pay to New Jersey, a pass -through electing pass-through entity, is gonna be reduced to federal taxable income. I'll have an example later on. But it reduces your federal taxable income, but it does not reduce your New Jersey taxable income. So, if a pass-through entity pays $50,000 in taxes to New Jersey as a pass-through entity tax, the state tax, it's going to get a deduction for federal, but it's not going to reduce New Jersey income. Now, who's eligible for um, the business alternative income tax under New Jersey law? Now, eligibility is pass through entities. It's S corporations, partnerships, limited liability companies classified as a partnership. So basically, an S corporation can have one owner, but partnerships or limited liability companies, LLPs, uh, need to have at least two owners. And the entity or the owners of the entity need to be liable for New Jersey tax, gross income tax, on the distributive share of entity gain. So basically, you have New Jersey income and your pass-through entity with one owner, one owner or more for an S corporation, with partnerships, limited liability companies, at least two owners. Now, who's not eligible for the pass-through uh, entity tax on New 
operating law is member LLCs and sole proprietorship. So if there's one owner, even though uh, they were considered pass-through uh, entities under or yeah, pass-through entities under 199A federal 20% deduction, not considered um, pass-through entities under New Jersey law. And this is designed because the federal law treats these single member LLCs as fiscal bargain entities and sole proprietorship. The income is reported directly on the 1040. There's no separate return. So therefore, it seems like the IRS would rule those to be the same as the individual and subject to uh, tax reforms, $10,000 salt limitation. Now, it gets more interesting here as we go along. It's an election. Um, so you, uh, as we said at the beginning, it's voluntary. You don't have to elect into paying this pass-through entity tax. It's, an, uh, it's optional. And you know, it seems unusual for someone to elect in to pay a tax. Um, as we talked about before, you can get a federal tax deduction. So that's the idea behind it. The election is due by the due date of the entity's tax return. Um, there's no retroactive election. So the idea behind this is the IRS, it seems like New Jersey is trying to give you as much flexibility as possible to make the election and as late as possible, at least this first year, number one, because of COVID-19, but also built into the law, which was passed before COVID-19, uh, was the ability to make the election later because it seems like the IRS, it seems like the IRS, uh, they want the IRS, if the IRS rules on it, If the IRS rules on it um, and disallows it, they want to be able to make the owners of the pass-through entity um, be able to opt out of it. So therefore, the members can, of the uh, pass-through entity can revoke the election by the due date of the entity's return. So if the IRS comes back and rules and says, New Jersey's uh, business alternative income tax election or say Connecticut's uh, pass-through entity tax is not allowed, then New Jersey can come back, uh, the owners of the entities can come back and opt out of it. So they're not taking a deduction on the federal return, which would be disallowed um, in the future. So really almost have until um, March 15th, 2020, uh, 2021, to kind of actually take this deduction, giving you as much time to determine whether the IRS is going to try to disallow the deduction. Now, who makes the election? The election is made by either consent of all the members of the electing entity, or if you have in your document that uh, one member, uh, one, there's an, a manager of the entity for tax decisions, then that person alone can make the uh, election to be a uh, to be subject to the New Jersey pass-through entity tax. Now, um, if you didn't make the election by March 15th, or if you didn't make the election, uh, then the you can't go back and amend your return to make the election. Say you're worried about the IRS overruling this, so you don't uh, take you don't want to take the deduction of your federal uh, reducing your federal income because the IRS could disallow it, and you'd be subject to the penalties and interest. Um, the IRS uh, New Jersey doesn't, and New Jersey doesn't want you going back three years from now and making this election um, retroactively. So therefore, you have to make it basically by the time filing tax return. Now, it was originally uh, put into the uh, stated by New Jersey that the election would be on estimates, but right now we don't have any estimates from New Jersey to pay the past entity tax. Moving on. Now, how is the entity's tax determined? What is the tax? Now, the pass-through entity tax, the bait tax, is determined by the proceeds of, uh, distributed from the entity. What does that mean? That means the business's net income. It means if it's some kind of um, investment uh, partnership, 
Um, it's the dividends, royalties, interest. If it's real estate, it's that the entity is holding rents, guaranteed payments, uh, gains from the sale of assets by the pass through entity. So all that, basically, it's anything that would be taxable to provide New Jersey. Uh, any source of income that the entity had for the most part. The second part of this is probably the more key. Now, you have, there's many entities that are operating in multiple states. If you're operating only in New Jersey and your business income is X, you know what your business income that's going to be subject to this New Jersey cash or entity tax. Now, it gets a little more complicated as the year goes along trying to uh, determine um, what is New Jersey source income? Because New Jersey is only going to tax the pass-through entity tax is subject uh, payable on New Jersey source income. Why is that? Because you're going to get you're going to pay taxes on other pass-through entity source income to the other states. So if you have income from Connecticut, you're paying to the Connecticut uh, pass-through entity tax. If you have income from uh, New York, you're paying New York income tax on that. Uh, income, and then you get a credit for the taxes paid back here in New Jersey. So New Jersey isn't double taxing that non-New Jersey source income. And as we said, it's taxable under New Jersey gross income tax. As we'll talk about later, if you're an exempt entity, um, you're not going to pay this tax. Now the tax rate is interesting. The tax rate on the first $250,000 is 5.675%, then it goes up from 250 to a million, to 6.52%, a million to 5 million, 9.12%, and over 5 million, 10.9%. So it's a graduated rate, it goes up. It's kind of coordinated with the New Jersey gross income tax um, rates. Since you're getting a credit for it here in New Jersey for your taxes paid, um, it seems like it should be coordinated with uh, with what you're going to pay in taxes here in New Jersey. So New Jersey on your 1040. So if you're getting a credit for the PE tax that you're paying on the pass-through entity, it's going to flow through to you as an individual owner. You know, for the most part, you want it to be equal to uh, what you're going to pay on your 1040. Now, this is a comparison between the two rates. And it, it's a little, it's a little off. So, the other part of this to keep in mind, which is very important, is the pass-through entity tax is payable on the partnership income. So if you have a million dollars in partnership income, you're paying a 6.52 rate. And if your partner gets um, $10,000 of partnership income, you have withholding on that $10,000 of pass-through entity tax, which will flow through to you as the owner uh, of 6.52% uh, uh, versus uh, 250 at 5.675%. So it's probably going to be, it might be at a higher rate as you as an individual. As you can kind of see here, an individual married by joint is only paying 1.4% on that first $20,000 of income. So if that was the only source of income, you'd be paying at a very low rate or uh, tax. You've been withheld at a very high rate of tax or you're getting your credit at a higher rate of tax. And then also at other points, there's kind of like a little skip where 250 to a million, at one point you start paying um, six, you start paying 6.52%. That could be a little bit higher rate than what you would pay, uh, a lower rate than what you would pay, um, between 500,000 and 5 million, you're paying at 8.9.7%. Also built in there is kind of the graduated rates. But there is, you're not going to get a credit for the exact amount of tax uh, necessarily that you're going to pay on your 1040. So there's going to be a little off. Now, when's the due date of the return? The due date of the pass through entity return is uh, one month earlier than the typical uh, partnership return. So if you have a if you make the election, your due date of the return is March 15th rather than April 15th of the return. So that's one thing to keep in mind when making that election. Uh, you know, keep in mind that that return due date is now March 15th. It's no longer April 15th. You're electing to pay the pass-through entity tax. If 
you don't pay the pass-through entity tax, it's going to be um, April 15th. Now, the pass-through entity tax, now this is, I think, creating a huge problem for New Jersey cash flow-wise. And I don't know if they necessarily thought about this at the time. Um, generally, most of us individuals, if you make estimated payments, you have income that is not subject to tax withholding of wages, and you're making estimated payments. You're making estimated payments um, April 15, June 15, September 15, and January 15. Um, so you'd be doing that throughout the 2020. Now, right now, New Jersey has not created the forms that make these estimated payments. You can't pay them online. So if you have a person with a high business income, they're paying nothing into New Jersey right now. They're decided, I'm going to pay the pass through entity tax. Um, they recalculate their estimates, factor in what they project to pay in New Jersey pass through entity tax. And they're not making, they're reducing their estimates, uh, New Jersey estimated payments on the individual level. Um, by what they're going to pay in pass through entity tax, which may be, they might not have to pay anything to New Jersey estimated payments. And right, and there's just, right now, there's no way to make estimated payments if you're pass through entity. New Jersey's not collecting any of the revenue that's related to these S corporations, uh, partnerships, um, pass through entities. So, therefore, you know, New Jersey's cash flow has to be down um, compared to what. Uh, it would normally collect uh, by these individuals that are making estimated payments based on the income the past two entities will, pay, uh, will pay over to them. So basically for 2020, you know, first year of ta the past two entity tax estimates seem to be not required. Um, therefore, you can pay the whole past two entity tax when you file your return by March 15th. And therefore, New Jersey is not going to collect the revenue uh, related to these past two entities until March 15th, it seems like. Now, the idea behind this is the cash basis for the taxpayer, if you want the federal deduction you know, to um, avoid an issue with this, it seems like you want to make that payment for the past two entity by December 31st. So that way you can make that deduction against your um, uh, federal income. Let me launch another polling question here. What type of business entity do you have? Do you have a sole proprietorship, partnership, two-member LLC, S corporation, or other? Launch the polling. Keep in mind, as we've kind of talked about, you need to answer the questions in order to get credit for the class. I'll give everybody a couple of minutes to uh, answer the question. Now, the other thing that we're, we've been talking about that people to answer the questions is that um, the idea behind creating a, uh, if you have a sole proprietorship or one member uh, one member LLC disregarded entity, you're not allowed to pay the past two entity tax. Um, the idea has been for some clients who have significant income is to create a partnership at, by January 1st, 2020 in tax planning and and the following in a minute here, and have the and create a partnership and start paying this pass through entity tax. We we'll give one percent of the entity to a spouse, or um, that's probably the best method. Certain you know spouse if your spouse isn't an attorney or isn't a um, a doctor or a dentist, then this might not be possible. But it seems like it's uh, an idea that could save significant federal tax dollars by creating uh, a pass-through entity. Now, um, I would say it's about 50-50 between sole proprietorship and partnerships. Okay. okay. Now, we're getting to the part where how do you figure out and how do you allocate the pass-through entity tax? 
the pass-through entity pays the tax, pays a hundred grand in taxes. Um, how do you distribute that tax credit that people are going to be able to take on the 1040s to the members, to the partners? Now, the allocation is based on, and it, make, and it makes perfectly sense, the allocation is based on the distributor's share of income from the past event. So if you have a partner that um, made a million dollars and one partner that made $2 million, the allocation is going to be 67% to the one partner and 33% to the um, to the partner that made a million dollars. So it's based, the allocation is based on the income being reported by that member. And then they're gonna get that prorated share, of, prorated share of the ta ta uh, tax paid by the tax entity. Um, now the good news on this for individuals, non-corporate owners, individuals, is it's a credit on your tax return. Not a deduction, you know, it's always a lot of confusion between deduction and credit, deduction you know, just reduces your taxable income. Credit is a dollar for dollar uh, reduction of your taxes. So it's a credit and you get to take after any other credits from New Jersey. And there's not that many credits from New Jersey, unfortunately. And the credit uh, is, if it exceeds, so as we talked about before, you know, tax rates differ Tax rate for the pass-through entity and tax rates for New Jersey gross income tax uh, by the, uh, the individual differ. So therefore, in the law, it is if you paid excess pass-through entity tax, you can get that uh, refunded to you, or you can apply it to 2000, uh, say 2021. So it's just almost like you actually pay taxes that you can get it refunded. Um, on the individual level, you get it refunded or applied to your 2021 taxes, your following year taxes, just like if you made an actual income tax payment. Now, I just kind of want to show this real quick as we kind of just talked about. You now, have a partnership that has a million dollars of income, it paid 63000 plus in pass through entity tax. Bob Smith, he, had, he got 60% of the income, 600000 Michael Jones, he got 300,000, 30% of the income. And Roger Thompson uh, had $100,000 of income. All the income from New Jersey source, which makes it easier. And then Bob Smith, he gets 60% uh, of the New Jersey pass through entity tax um, credit. Michael Jones, he's allocated 18,926. And Roger Smith gets 10, uh, Roger Thompson gets 10%. So they'll take that as a credit, and we'll show an example of that later. They're going to take that as a credit on their 2020 tax returns against their uh, New Jersey income tax liability. Bear with me a second. Just want to see if anybody has any questions. Looks like Brian had a little problem with the uh, with questions, but we we're working on that. Okay. Now this is another little interesting here. You know, in this watch we handle a lot of uh, income tax returns for trusted estates, and New Jersey allowed quite a bit of flexibility on this. You know, we don't have the forms for it, um, so we can't see the flow through of it at this point. But it's going to be very interesting to see how. Um, it shows up on the K-1, it shows up on the pass-through entity, and shows up on the individual level. But trust or estates, you know, the credit, New Jersey seems like it's allocate, uh, allowing flexibility, but the credit can be either flow through to the beneficiary or it can be used to reduce the tax liability of the estate or trust, which uh, is rather good option. Um, you know, if the income's not flow going out to the beneficiary, you can kind of use it against the estate of trust or uh, income, or you can float out to the beneficiary and you can do some tax planning there. And it seems like it's going to be the decision of the trustee or executor's decision on whether to uh, float that out to the beneficiary or uh, for the estate trust to take. So it is actually a pretty good option for New Jersey to give you that flexibility. Now, corporate pastor owners, you know, you have an owner 
that's kind of what we were talking before, is an estate or trust that's the owner of a pass-through entity, and that's a corporation or a partnership. Here you have a corporation that is a co-owner or owner of a pass-through entity, such as a partnership. So it's a, they're in a partnership. They elect to pay uh, New Jersey business entity tax. Um, as a result of that, the corporation can use that credit against its CPP tax or its surta uh, surtax um, equal to the kind of the same thing in proportion to get the credit in proportion to the income distributed to by the partnership to the corporation. Now the credit can't reduce the CPP or surtax below the minimum tax. The good news, unlike the individual where it was refundable or carry over to uh, the following year uh, as an applied payment, um, it's limited, it's more limited, but it does carry forward for up to 20 years. Now, the other part of this, you know, we handle um, many exempt entities. Uh, an exempt entity is if you're exempt from the CDP tax, then you're allowed a refund of the business uh, alternative income tax. Then it gets, I'm not going to go into this part, this is probably class by itself, is um, if you have corporate, if you kind of file a combined return or unitary return, uh, unitary with other companies, other entities, then it gets much more complicated and you may not be able to take that tax only against certain income. Now, New Jersey, since they created this tax, of course, as we talked about, Connecticut has the tax, um, Wisconsin, Louisiana, I think Oklahoma, multiple other states. New Jersey, and when it, and they, to New Jersey's credit, they were allowing the credit before for it. So um, New Jersey, if you pay similar pass-through entity taxes to other states, you have a pass-through entity, and it has, doesn't have New Jersey source income, it has income from Connecticut, has income from Oklahoma, has income from other states, you get a credit for that against your New Jersey uh, tax liability. So it kind of like as if you had made a normal payment to a state. Now the, as you should know, or you know, a lot of people it's more, very complicated. If you pay excess taxes, say to New York at a higher rate, the credit's going to be limited to uh, what you would pay to New Jersey. So if the New Jersey tax is uh, fifty dollars and you paid a hundred dollars to Connecticut. Uh, your credit here in New Jersey is going to be limited to fifty dollars. To pay bait or not to take the bait or not to take the bait. Uh, it's an inter interesting decision. You know, the first one I'll take is risk tolerance. Um, as we talked about, you can kind of almost get away with not making uh, a final decision or have the ability to revoke your decision until uh, March of next year. So therefore, you kind of got some flexibility on that until next year, uh, just March 15, 2021. Uh, but the problem is, you know, it takes the IRS, you know, could take the IRS years and years to make a decision on this. So if you file uh, taking uh, New Jersey pass through entity tax as a federal tax deduction, reducing your federal uh, K-1 income, you know, the IRS rules against this 20 years, uh, excuse me, a couple of years from now, say a year or two from, you know, 2021, then all of a sudden you're getting audited and the IRS is going to look for probably interest and penalties. Uh, on Number one, the unpaid tax, that your income should not have been reduced by the New Jersey passive entity tax. And then it's also on that uh, additional income that was subject to additional taxes. Now you're paying interest and penalties. Um, you know, based on uh, the time frame that the IRS came uh, back against you. So there is a little bit of risk there. So, you know, it's something that people, uh, before they make the election, they have to understand that there is a potential downside to making the election if the IRS rules against it. You know, the good news was the charitable trust, the IRS kind of ruled against it relatively quickly. Now, we've gone through a couple of years. Um, of Connecticut's pass through entity tax, and the IRS is still not ruled against it. So, um, you know, could they still rule against it? It's definitely a possibility. Now, the second factor that you, 
uh, the additional factors that are kind of tangentially impacted by this. Um, number one, we talked about the estimated payments. You know, if you're going to pay this, this tax, um, then you have to adjust your New Jersey estimates. So otherwise, you're going to probably be overpaying. Um, you'll get it refunded when you file your 2020, uh, 2020 tax return, but you're going to be overpaying New Jersey. And also, you factor in um, the deduction on the federal level, you could be overpaying uh, federal. I think that's less of an issue, the federal part of it, um, but the New Jersey part is more of an issue, is that um, New Jersey, you make the election, you're getting a credit, it's dollar for dollar reduction. And, and if you don't adjust your New Jersey estimates, um, you're going to be underpaid. It. Then the other part is if you end up invoking it, now you're suddenly underpaid, in New Jersey, possibly underpaid in New Jersey because you, you thought you were going to make the New Jersey uh, pass through entity tax payments, and now you're not. Um, second part of this to consider is if partnership, you have a non resident partners. You're subject to New Jersey withholding. Now, if you're paying the New Jersey pass through entity tax, you really don't have to do the New Jersey uh, non resident withholding anymore. So that, you know, these payments, those payments are due, you know, quarterly, and now, um, and you still can't pay the New Jersey pass through entity tax uh, quarterly at this point because uh, there's no way to pay it. Um, so you have to do some planning on this. So you stop, if you're going to do that payment, you're going to stop doing those non resident withholding payments because you know the uh, the member, non-resident member, is going to get a credit for uh, the pass-through entity tax. So it doesn't make sense to do that non-resident anymore. Now, some factors that you really want to consider, um, you know, before you decide to pay this pass-through entity tax, is New Jersey buckets. Now, this is where New Jersey kind of goes off the rails from uh, the federal government. The federal government kind of treats all classes all uh, income the same, you know, we have capital gains, qualified dividends, um, but the, you know, whether your income came from an S corporation or a partnership, it doesn't matter. Now, the federal government uh, considers passive entities and non-passive entities. New Jersey doesn't have a passive entity or non-passive entity, it has buckets. So the buckets or the pass-through entities or S corporations and partnerships, um, now, if you have other, say you have a million dollars in income from partnership A, and you know you're gonna have a million dollar loss from partnership B, then why would you wanna pay tax through entity tax? Because you're not gonna be subject to tax on that income anyway. This is gonna wash out in the buckets. Um, same thing if you have you know, an S corporation that made $500,000, and you have another S corporation that uh, plus $700,000, um, you know, that $500,000 of income is not gonna be subject to tax here in New Jersey. So you're gonna end up um, not paying uh, any, it doesn't make sense of paying tax or anything tax since the $500,000 S corp income is not gonna be subject to tax here in New Jersey. And this is where you kind of get into tax planning. You don't wanna be in a situation uh, necessarily, that you have partnership income of five hundred thousand dollars and S corporation loss of seven hundred thousand dollars because they don't offset each other. Now, there's something called the New Jersey um, alternative tax deduction for those entities, where you get fifty percent uh, of that, and it's, there's a carryover. But in general, you kind of want to have all your entities kind of classified the same. Um, the second part, besides New Jersey buckets, is the sourcing of the income. Now, this is, as the year goes along, this might be a more difficult thing to determine. Uh, you're paying the passive entity tax on source, New Jersey source income, Connecticut source income, New York source income, Pennsylvania source income is not subject to the um, passive entity tax. As a result, um, you know, you have to, as you kind of go along through the year, kind of figure out what's going to be your New Jersey source income and, you know, determine your estimated payments on the individual level. And you know, after 2020, uh, the pass-through entities, pass-through entity tax estimated payments uh, based on what you think New Jersey source income is going to be. Now, the other part of this to consider too is going to be, you know, a non-resident member um, um, who's living in you know California. You got to make sure California is going to give you a credit 
with the New Jersey uh, pass through entity tax, and then California through their individual return. So you, you gotta make sure that, that this, the members are gonna get a benefit of this pass through entity tax. And in a non New Jersey state, that might not be guaranteed. You know, that they might view it as, you know, uh, not a individual tax payment, not, therefore, you don't get a credit back in California uh, for the pass through entity tax. So that's the other part that you want to think about. Um, tax savings, and that problem primarily applies to non residents. Now, the tax savings aspect of this, how much is this going to actually reduce your taxes? Um, you know, we talked about, you know, for uh, high income people creating a partnership so they can pay this tax. And it's not really, it's not saving you New Jersey tax. New Jersey tax is going to be what it is. You're just paying it a different way. It's the federal taxes that are going to be reduced. So you want to kind of take a look at what do you think your uh, federal taxes are going to be reduced by. If they're going to be reduced by, you know, $100 or $200, and right now you're operating as a sole proprietorship, but, you know, you could create, give your wife 1% file a partnership return and pay it past New Jersey through pass through entity tax, um, it, it isn't worth it. You're going to have to file another return, just different additional reporting requirements. Um, it won't, wouldn't make sense. Now, if you make ten million dollars, and you're going to get, uh, it's going to more significantly reduce your federal income, your federal K1 that you're getting from that pass-through entity. Then it makes more sense. So that's something you want to consider. Uh, you know, whether you want to pay the pass-through entity tax or not. It's, it's going to really result in tax savings. I'm going to launch another polling question here. And this is just kind of a general information question. As a result of tax reform, do you think you paid more in federal taxes in uh, 2000, 2019? Or do you, you think you paid the same? Or uh, no, you paid less? Just for just general information, uh, whether it, um, how tax reform impacted it. Was that the whole design through this pass through entity tax is to kind of um, circumvent tax reform, that $10,000 salt limitation. Now, it seems like higher, it really depends on the, you know, what your type of income was, what your deductions were before, whether um, the pass through entity tax, uh, excuse me, uh, whether tax reform positively or negatively impacts you. There's some clients who, uh, you know, benefit from tax reform. There's a higher standard of deduction, uh, lower rates in certain brackets, um, while other people, you know, they had high uh, state and local income taxes, they weren't subject to AMT, and they were really penalized by tax reform. Let me give you another minute and then another few seconds, and then we'll kind of close out the polling. And it's basically 50-50, 50-50 um, between people that they were not negatively impacted and 50-50 between uh, uh, being actually positively impacted. No one said about the same. I'm ending polling now. Okay. Right, moving on. Guidance. You know, New Jersey seems to be very short of guidance in this area. Um, we have the law, we know what the law says, but we have not gotten any uh, additional information on it. And, you know, it's, we haven't seen the forms, we haven't seen the, you know, SNA payment forms, and it's hopefully New Jersey will come out that relatively soon, um, but it's been very slow forthcoming. Uh, I understand the COVID-19 and everything going on. The good news is that, as we talked about, you know, based on what New Jersey has said, you know, first year, you don't have to make the payments to basically file the return. As we talked about, if you're cash basis taxpayer, you probably want that pass through entity to pay it by December 31st. So we're hoping by December, uh, you know, by December, there'll be a way to pay it. Uh, we kind of talked about whether the IRS will take uh, credit, allow the credit, litigate, accept. Um, you know, this is just kind of open up 
open in the air. They haven't litigated this issue. It seemed like they came across, came against um, the charitable trust quickly. We'll find out uh, in the future. And this is kind of like, as we talked about, it's kind of the, the risk area of it, whether the IRS will challenge it or not challenge it. Right. Moving on here, I just want to show everybody an example of the pass through entity uh, calculation. So here you have the first 250 partnership had um, income, I think it's 659, 173. And first 250 is taxed at 5.675%. The balance over 250 taxed at 6.52%. So you're paying 40, the entity, the Smith S Corp income um, is paying 40,866 in pass rent. Now that, since they paid it, we'll assume they paid it by December 31st, cash basis taxpayer, it's reducing their K-1 by 40,866. So now they have taxable income of 618,307 on the federal K-1. So they got a deduction, business deduction by the S corporation of $40,000 plus. Now they have taxable income from the K-1 for that S corporation of 618. Now what, what is the point of all this? is if they're in the highest bracket, 37%, um, the federal tax savings of $15,000. As you know, you have more a business that makes more money, you know, that tax savings is gonna, is gonna go up for federal. But that's, you know, as you went to tax New Jersey, $40,000, you would not have been able to take that deduction on your individual return because it would have been over the $10,000 limit of the state and local taxes, the salt limitation. So they get a benefit of that deduction of fifteen thousand dollars in the school return. This kind of, kind of shows the flow through of New Jersey. New Jersey K1 uh, for that S corporation isn't reduced by the pass through entity tax, so it's a starting number. You add in the, uh, your other income, there's your property taxes, say fifteen thousand dollars, which would have put you over that salt limitation on the federal return. And the taxable income, a tax on $778,000 of this person's uh, income would have been 52581 And then they're getting a credit for the past new entity tax. We're assuming everything's New Jersey source, uh, $40,866. And that leaves $11,715 bill. And this is where you get into the tax planning that you would have want to make your uh, estimated payments on the individual level based on the $11,715 projected income not the 52,000 because you had to pass through entity credit. And real quick, I think we're coming to the end here. Um, sourcing. Now, this is really the uh, probably the, uh, the most one of the most important parts of this. It's only a pass through entity tax is only payable in New Jersey source income. So you have a pass through entity S corp partnership that's in multiple states. You're only paying pass through entity tax on the New Jersey income. So if you had income of 150 in New Jersey, you're paying pass through entity tax on that. 150. Uh, and then Connecticut, you're paying the pass through entity tax on the Connecticut's pass through entity tax on the 25,000. So, and then you're getting the reason why, as we talked about, you're getting the credit for New York and you're getting the credit for uh, Connecticut taxes on your 1040. So, the taxes you pay to Connecticut, the taxes you pay to New York, you get a credit on your 1040, New Jersey 1040 for those taxes. Now, let me launch another polling question here as we come to the end. I'm actually going to launch two real quick. Bear with me just a second. The first one. Okay. Are you planning to elect into paying the New Jersey pass through entity tax? Not applicable? Yes, no. And really, you know, if you have New Jersey source income, there's really no downside electing to paying it, um, at least through March 15th. So it makes sense to elect into it. If you're not going to have, you know, your income reduces by buckets, other buck, uh, other partnerships in the same bucket, S corporation uh, partnerships in the same bucket. So it makes sense to do that. I'm going to end the polling in just a second. I'm going to launch one more polling question. Ending polling now. Okay, and it's it's 70% of people said they were going to elect into it. 
and the other people really wasn't applicable. Okay, we're gonna watch one more polling question real quick. Um, how impacted was your practice by COVID-19? Were you negatively impacted, neutral, or positively impacted? You know, some businesses uh, have done actually better during COVID-19, while other businesses have done um, you know, significantly worse. You know, you hate to be in a situation, be a uh, restaurateur or a uh, gym right now, because you know, you've basically have been uh, unable to practice, uh, operate your business. So. Right, we'll give it one more minute to answer the questions and then I'll, we'll be done. And I'm just going to take a quick look um, for any questions ending polling. And it seems like, you know, 70% of the people have been negatively impacted and um, one person was positively impacted and the rest were neutral. Okay, let's just take a quick look for any questions anybody has, if I can answer them. Uh, it doesn't seem like anybody has any questions, so um, we'll close out. And if anybody wants to email me any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Or just give me a call at Ms. Vacha, and I'll be happy to uh, do my best to uh, answer your questions. But we are all set, and thank you for attending. Uh, the certificates for the attorney uh, will go out within the next week or two. If we have everybody's email address, we'll send those out in the next week or two. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.